the Joneses. They've just bought some land and are getting their permits to build a house in Whatcom County. As you may recall, with the help of a consultant and planning staff, wetlands were found on their property and protective buffers that need to be avoided were identified. Now it's time to build a dream home. In order to do so, it will take some serious consideration to protect the wetlands and their buffers. Mike, I know we said a cute two bedroom, but I really think we're gonna need just a few more rooms, especially if we're gonna do this kid thing. I know, I know, but I'm just not sure that we have the space we need for the house that we want, given this wetland. But we need a playroom and a nursery and a diaper changing nook. Oh, and an extra spare bedroom. For my mother. Whoa, 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 whoa. Your mother can sleep in the wetland if she needs to. Mike, let's be serious. This just sound Huge? But can't we just build a teensy-weensy bit of our home in the buffer? Well, your current plans show a building footprint of 1,700 square feet. Based on your wetland delineation, you should have room for a slightly larger house, maybe up to 2,500 square feet, though it may impact the buffer. Now, if we had a little bit more room, we might be able to average the buffer. But because your buildable area is just a bit too small, that leaves mitigation or enhancement of the buffer. But don't worry, I can put together a wetland mitigation plan for you. Well, what's that involve? And more importantly, what's that going to cost me? Ugh, we better just stick to that two-bedroom house. With that attitude, you might just end up sleeping in the wetland with my mother. Not to worry, the process is real straightforward and nobody needs to sleep hmm. in a wetland. The benefit of this approach is that we can maintain the functions and habitat value of the wetlands and maintain the continued health of the wetland system. So let's explore these options with planning staff and see which works best for your property. Thank you. Well, it looks like a 2,500 square foot house will impact about 200 square feet of buffer. Hmm. Sorry, honey. Looks like your walk-in shoe closet is back on the chopping block. Well, actually, in some circumstances, you're allowed to impact wetland buffers because Whatcom County generally allows a standard size house as a reasonable use. What's a reasonable use? Reasonable use is the concept that property owners have certain development rights even when critical areas impacts cannot be avoided. In these instances, development may be allowed provided the purpose and intent of the critical areas code is met. So, do I get my shoe closet? More than likely, but we'll need to develop a mitigation plan that accounts for the 200 square feet of impacted buffer by providing enhancement or creation of new buffer areas of equal or greater size. 200 square feet of enhancement? I think we could handle that. But, on the other hand, I could just use your closet as extra shoe storage. Hmm. <laughs> that sounds like an unreasonable use to me. I think I'd like to learn a little bit more about this mitigation. Well, sure. Mitigation can range from planting a few native trees to creating a full wetland. A wetland consultant is required to design the mitigation so that the function of the impacted buffer is fully replaced. Catching. It's always good to understand the total cost of mitigation before choosing to impact the wetland or its buffer. In addition to the mitigation plan, there are costs associated with site preparation, and you'll have new native plants to purchase and install. To make sure you actually do the mitigation plan, the county requires an assignment of savings be set aside prior to approving your building permit. The amount is equal to 125% of the estimated cost of installing the mitigation. And once the mitigation is installed, we'll need to submit an as-built report describing the final installed condition of the mitigation area. You will need to submit annual monitoring reports documenting continued success of the mitigation for up to five years, though this can often be done by the homeowner. You mean we won't be able to build our house for five years? No, that's just how long the mitigation is monitored. Once you have your mitigation approved, you can move forward with the building permit process. You'll just need to install the mitigation before you move in. Before you go this route, you should know that the mitigation area will be permanently regulated just like the wetland and its buffer. This means no future impacts will be allowed in that area. Yeah, that makes sense to me. I mean, now that we know what wetlands are all about, we wouldn't want to put our house out there anyways. You know, Mike, I'm really starting to see the value of these wetlands. I hate to admit it, honey, but I am too. We got the house that we wanted 
all while preserving and enhancing the land that drew us to this spot in the first place.